uh, Pragmater for uh, testing distributed systems by means of uh, automatic interleaving uh, of uh, execution of test cases. So with a constant and ever growing interest in uh, large scale and distributed systems, um, there is a need for more and more complex applications that can run on such uh, um, heterogeneous and highly distributed infrastructures. Uh, one of the most common examples of this is the Internet of, of Things that um, interconnect billions of smart objects. So, speaking of such highly distributed infrastructure, we have a very high number of nodes, millions or billions of nodes, then uh, their operation is not isolated. So, we are speaking about uh, systems and of nodes that inter uh, interact with one another. So, test cases must account for the distribution and interaction between those nodes. So, if we start and we consider that uh, we have um, some test cases that actually test the behavior of a certain node, uh, then we want to actually use those test cases for such a scenarios, uh, then usually there are two possibilities. The first one is to modify those, those test cases to account for such a distribution. That means that the test cases must uh, use their mechanism, I mean the language they are described to, to actually take account of this distribution by means of components or other means. Or the other option is to actually don't touch the test cases, but uh, provide or come up with a kind of mechanism that can uh, actually uh, automate the, the, the execution or simulate the execution in a, a distributed environment. So for that we need to control such execution, for example, by means of a scheduler. So before describing a little bit the problem and the solution that we came up, uh, let me introduce to you some um, thoughts about the technology that we use for, um, for actually implementing such a solution. So uh, we use a specification and description language, which is an ITUT standard for uh, modeling the system and the functional aspects of the system. Uh, then um, we use deployment diagrams, part of the unified modeling language, to describe the distribution of the components or the, um, the parts of the system described in SDL. And then we use another standardized language, uh, the testing and test control notation, version 3, uh, standardized by the ETSI, to describe the test cases. So, in SDL we can um, describe the structure of the system by means of blocks and processes. So you can imagine a uh, quite hierarchical representation of the system when the leaves on such hierarchy are the processes at the end. And uh, such, uh, such processes, the behavior of such processes can be described by means of finite state machines. When you have states, of course, transitions and um, um, uh, action blocks sending and receiving signals and so on and so forth. Also, what is uh, important here is that uh, SDL has a very formal semantics and also an action language, which allows us to also describe the functional behavior in more details. So, in the picture you can see a very simple example. This is a client <coughs> server. Uh, when we have two blocks, each of those composed of only one process each, meaning a client and a server process, and then the behavior of uh, the process described by uh, means of state machines. So, imagine a client server, when, uh, when we usually speak about client server scenario, we imagine that we have a client running on one node and the server running on another one. So, we are, this is the basics of a distributed scenario. So, how we describe the distribution is by means of deployment diagrams. Um, so we represent each of the blocks, building blocks of the system by means of components in a deployment diagram and then connect them to nodes, to the notion of nodes, and then connect the nodes by means of channels. So um, into them we can add other properties that can describe the, the identification of each of the nodes and the components in a distributed uh, scenario. 
uh, then what we do is that we can uh, come up with test scenarios described in TTCM3, of course, which is uh, mainly um, has mainly a textual representation. And what we can do, we can execute those test scenarios against the system, meaning the specification in SDL. Also, it is possible to uh, generate or use also graphical representation of those test cases by means of uh, sequence charts. So, having said that, uh, let me come to some questions that we posed uh, during the whole um, uh, development or specification process using the SDL and also test cases by means of TTCM3. So, the first question that we posed to us is what, what are the effects of distributed execution of test cases? So, which means that we can have a test case for testing, uh, for example, the behavior of the client. Well, that's a very simple scenario, but anyways, um, we thought what will happen if we have a uh, thousand of clients and then we have that test case. What does it mean? Does this distribution or the, the increase of number of clients have any effect on the execution of test cases? And by effect, I mean, will the system behave differently if I run, for example, a hundred uh, instances of that test case in a distributed scenario? So, if so, is it a good choice to actually rewrite the test cases in order to execute them, or should we have some other means of executing them in parallel? So, in this way, we, we shouldn't actually touch the test cases at all. So, for that, um, we should come up with um, a very efficient way to actually simulate or execute in, uh, the test cases in that scenario. So, from a very uh, rapid analysis of the problem, so if we consider, for example, the concurrent execution of K test cases, and considering NI instructions for each of the test cases, uh, and we actually want to execute them in parallel in, in a controlled environment, then we have to take into account the whole interleaving of the instructions of the test cases. If we want to test the whole possible scenarios. Now, in order to do that, we should automatically generate such uh, interleaving or such execution of all the involved test cases. And in that scenario, we have the number of interleavings, it's, it's given there you know, in, in the formula of the I. Now, if you simplify it just a little bit to have an idea of the complexity, if we consider, for example, uh, as I uh, presented before, the uh, the example of the client server and we have a test case for a client and we want to, to execute that test case for 100 clients in an interleaved way uh, then in that case we have one test case and if we consider the n y to be the n uh, we should have the number of interleavings as, as shown in the slide so this is a typical case of a state explosion problem which makes the actual in, uh, execution of all possible interleavings uh, fairly practical. But, however, um, what we have seen is that not all of those interleavings are relevant. So, let me explain that a little bit more. Distribution may uh, affect behavior only if there is an interaction between the nodes. So, even if I have a test case composed of, I don't know, hundreds of uh, instructions or lines of code, it doesn't necessarily mean that if I have to interleave, for example, uh, 100 instances of those test you know, that test case, uh, the actual all the possible interleavings are relevant to me because what I'm trying to do is to investigate the actual um, effect on the behavior of the system um, if distribution is involved. So in that case, I should only focus on the points of the test case that actually trigger a distributed interaction between the nodes. So if the execution of the test case does not involve any interaction, then the distribution will not have any impact. So in the case of the client server, for example, if the test case just tests the behavior of the client its own, but not, does not trigger any interaction with the server, it doesn't, have, uh, it doesn't um, bring us uh, any... I mean, it's, uh, it's at the end, it's not uh, really worth 
investigating that scenario. On the contrary, if the clients have a heavy communication between um, with the server, then it is worth investigating and trying to come up with a solution for the scenario. So, uh, what we came up is a solution that interleaves its execution at critical points of the test case. So, by critical points, we mean uh, the instruction that actually triggered an interaction between the nodes. So, let me take a very simple example and explain to you briefly the algorithm. So, what we do is that we take the test case and if we consider the list shown there, M1 to M10 uh, instructions of the test case, and then we assign a numeric identifier at the top, B0 or 1, denoting if uh, that actual instruction triggers a distributed communication or interaction between the nodes. So, we start by grouping the instructions, and then into the execution of the groups, but not into the execution after each instruction. So each, each of the groups, so the algorithm consists in, group, in the grouping, but grouping, each group must include at most one instruction which triggers interaction. So what it means that if I go and group the sequence shown there, then every group should have at most um, uh, one digit set to one. So this is uh, what the grouping would look like, and this is how uh, I'm going to actually uh, interleave the execution of the test case. So, as I said, the group consists of all subsequent uh, instructions in the test case uh, for which uh, the actual sum of the digits at the top um, are one. So, if I actually go and uh, replace uh, the correct numbers in the formula I gave before, and then try to do the same, but now with the number of groups, not with uh, each of the instructions, then I would have uh, a reduce in the whole uh, interleaving numbers by a factor of uh, approximately 700, which is uh, quite impressive. So, uh, the next point is, okay, we have an analysis, we came up with a solution now to the automation. This is what we are interested in. Can we actually automate that process, meaning uh, automate the whole interleaving and the execution of those interleavings? So, what we did is that we extend uh, the existing uh, sim SDL simulator, part of the Pragmatev Studio, by means of an interleaving scheduler. And how it works is like this, that at first uh, we try to execute the test case, and this is done automatically, and mark the instructions that trigger interaction uh, based, uh, based on the deployment diagram. So what it means is that we describe, we model the distribution of components of the system by means of the deployment diagram. Then we can execute a test case um, for our specification, and then find the critical points that are interesting to us so, that, so uh, that then we can automatically generate all the relevant interleavings. Afterwards, the simulator automatically switch, switches to interleaving mode, and uh, with all that information gathered from the first execution, then it automatically interleaves and executes all possible uh, scenarios. So, this is um, a short overview of uh, the Pragmatic Code Simulator. So, we have an SDL specification and the TTCM3 test cases, and from them we, we, ge we generate bytecode and which we can execute. And the actual um, um, heart of the whole process is the scheduler, which schedules all the interaction between the processes. So what it does, it first identifies the critical points and then it is rerun uh, by executing all possible interleavings. So let me show a very simple example of this. Um, we have applied uh, this uh, solution to an access control system, a specification that we have. Uh, this is a very simple uh, system composed of terminals and the central unit. So each terminal has a slot for a card and a key. And um, the user enters the card and the key, of course, and the central unit uh, checks whether access should be granted to the user or not. So, and in general, the user can be either an administrator or a normal user. 
an administrator is allowed to add more users. So what we did, usually we start with the system in a very simple test case, that is uh, getting access to administrator and um, going out, basically, of administrator mode. So this is a very, very simple test scenario. So what it means is that if we uh, deploy this scenario, we would have um, the very simple scenario, we will have one terminal and one central unit, which will run in different nodes. So basically, if the user enters the key and the code, then this information should be sent to the central unit. And in this point, when this information is sent, then we have a critical point, because we have a distributed interaction between these components. So at the end, we identify, or uh, basically the algorithm will identify one interleaving point, which means two groups of instructions. So if we have two terminals, which is the simplest scenario of all, then we have in total six interleaving. So it's not a very high number. So at first we didn't expect much out of it. However, we, we have seen that running the whole scenario with the interleaving scheduler, uh, we have seen in the behavior that one of the terminals blocks indefinitely, waiting for a reply from the central unit scenario in which we couldn't identify using uh, the simple execution of the test case before. So, uh, going on further uh, with much more complex test cases, uh, we identify four similar problems by using the, the interleaving schedule. And what is more interesting is that we actually didn't have to write or modify any of the test cases. Everything ran automatically in the background and showed us where the problems were. Of course, the, the whole tool chain um, after that uh, allows us to, to actually go into uh, where the problem was and uh, quickly fix that. So, in conclusion, um, what it is important, however, to say is that uh, the algorithm um, may not always produce significantly less interleavings. And that should be clear, uh, because uh, reducing such number of interleavings depends on the degree of interaction between the nodes. So if there is a high degree of interaction between the nodes, then more, uh, more interleavings we will have. However, we believe that uh, this is more of an exception than the rule. Uh, in considering, for example, uh, scenarios with uh, thousands or, or even millions of nodes which are battery powered, then energy consumption is usually a very crucial point. So, uh, in general, they try to, to limit into communication between the nodes because of, uh, of such constraints. So they usually try to, to reduce at a minimum the, the interaction or distributed interaction. So we have success, uh, successfully applied, applied our approach with a simple example. As I've shown to you, however, we are still working on more complex systems uh, with much more complex test cases and distributed scenarios. Uh, what it is important here is to mention that the approach is based on simulation. And uh, for the moment, it cannot be applied at present for test cases on a real target. And now that should be obvious to you because we, we need an actual controlling environment for the whole process um, to, to identify the, the possible problems in the system and to actually automatically run all the possible interleavings. So for now, we are focused on the simulation part using an SDL system, and uh, we are currently also investigating the, the possibility to um, go on the real test cases and real systems. However, there the problem is more complex because it needs an actual and complex mechanism of controlling the whole interleaving in a in real system. So, thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.